Hi, it's Dr. Woodall again. I want to talk a little bit about why it's difficult to change. We may know that we need to do something, we may feel that we need to change, but we're unable to. I want to talk a little bit about why it's difficult. To do this, I want to talk about something we've all heard of before, something called the fight or flight syndrome. If we understand a little bit about this, we might understand a little bit more about how we can change when we need to and how we can help kids change. We might also look at them through a little bit different lens when we see that they're having difficulties. So let's talk about something we've all experienced, this fight or flight response. I'll use an example of when we were kids. Think of an example of you playing ball or uh, maybe you're playing outfield and uh, the ball gets hit out into the street and you go chasing after it and you're thinking about the guy on third, you want to get out. You're, th you're feeling excited and uh, maybe a little bit worried about the game. And you're also behaving uh, with real focus on the game. So you're running and you run into the street and you look up and all of a sudden you see a bumper coming at you. Right? Just like that, everything changes. An emergency system kicks in, your adrenaline system. This adrenaline system kicks in for one purpose, so that we survive. It's an, an emergency system. It's only used, it's only intended to be used in an emergency. So what happens? We look up, we see that bumper coming at us, and in a, a hundredth of a second, our body becomes flooded with adrenaline. Now, adrenaline does some very important things to help us survive. Let's think of three of them. <clears throat> the first thing it does is it commandeers our thinking. Whatever it was we were thinking before, now we're only going to think about the threat. So we're seeing that bumper come at us, all of a sudden the game is out of our head, just gone. We're not thinking about going home for dinner, we're not thinking about uh, the crowd cheering uh, the game, we're not thinking about the game, we're thinking about that bumper. Very focused, only thinking about the threat. So the first effect of adrenaline is to focus our thinking on a threat. The second function of adrenaline is on our emotions. And we might have been having fun and a little bit challenged until we ran into the street and saw that bumper. But once we saw that bumper and the adrenaline kicked in, the adrenaline also hijacks our feelings. So now, the only feelings that we can have are our survival feelings. And they're basically two. One is fear, one is anger. If we're more afraid when we see that bumper coming at us, then we're more focused on getting out of there, on fleeing, right? Right. It helps us stay focused on what we need to do to get away, that fear does. If we're more angry than fearful, then we're more focused on fighting the thing that's threatening us. Okay, so adrenaline does these two things to our feelings. We're either more uh, focused on fear or more focused on anger towards that threat. One helps us get out of there, the other helps us fight. Okay, so adrenaline is now... Uh, focused our thoughts only on the threat, and it's focused our emotions on fear or anger. The third thing it does is it affects our behavior. In this case, see the bumper coming at us, and in a fraction of a second we jump out of the way. Our muscles are tensed, our heart starts pounding faster, our eyes dilate, our respiration gets faster, all to help us either flee from that thing that's coming at us, the bumper, or to fight it. It's a great mechanism that without even thinking, all of these things happen. That's the key without even thinking, all of these things happen. They happen outside of our awareness, pretty much. So it's a great automatic system. Let's translate that into a classroom. If a child comes into the class and they've just been threatened by a bully, if they've been threatened by a parent or another, another adult, or if they're fearful for uh, their safety in any way, they, they're not sure where they're going to eat, uh, they didn't sleep well, there's some crisis at home, their mind isn't focused on new information. Their mind is focused on the threat, right? And as long as it's focused on the threat, nothing else is going to get in. Neurologically, it, the adrenaline won't allow anything in. Similarly, emotionally, the child is, is wired more towards fear and withdrawal or anger and lashing out. Remember we talked about the weakened and the rigid identities? That's the root of, the, uh, of these two things. And behaviorally, the child may either be listless, lethargic, or hyper hyperactive and bouncing around. So, 
What we need to do then is to help the child calm their brain down so that the adrenaline levels can go down so that the adrenaline will release the brain and allow it to think again. Think of it this way. It's like, a, it's like one of those needles that you see on a stereo system or in a car where it's green and then it goes into the red. That adrenaline in normal day-to-day -day life is just, you know, right here in the green. But when an emergency comes up, it flips over into the red and it floods the body with that adrenaline. And once, let's say, the threat's gone, that car bumper moves past us, that adrenaline can start to go down again to the normal level, right? And then once, as it does that, as the adrenaline level goes down, it releases the mind to think again. It releases the emotions to be flexible again. And it releases our behavior so that we don't feel the need to repeat behaviors over and over again, okay? Maybe we're living under such a constant state of threat that that adrenaline level never really gets a chance to go down. So we're constantly in a hyper-adrenaline state where our mind is always focused on threat, our emotions are always focused in anger and fear, and our behavior is always constricted by these things. Or it only takes a little bit to push us into that red zone. That's a problem. That's a problem for us as adults in our relationships. It's a problem when we're trying to solve problems when, uh, at work or if we're trying to be creative with other people. It's a problem for kids if they're trying to learn. So this is the value of uh, helping children lower their adrenaline levels because it liberates their thinking, their feeling, and their behavior. Right? That's the value of creating that bowl, forming that bowl we talked about in the previous videos. If we don't do it, the child's brain is going to be preoccupied with um, the sense of threat, whether they can identify a threat or not. Okay? So to teach a child to be engaged in learning, we need to help them calm their brain down. And that's what forming the bowl does. So what we're going to talk about in the subsequent videos are four domains that if we work in these four domains, we can help reduce that adrenaline. And it's something we have to practice. These are environments we have to create, as we were talking about in forming the bowl in the previous video. That's the necessity of forming that bowl, creating that sense of safety and trust so that the child's adrenaline can go down, right? So that they can begin to learn again, that their brain can be liberated, their emotions can be free again, and their behavior can be creative. Okay? These four domains are reflectivity, reframing, responsibility, and relationships. We'll talk about those in coming videos. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon.